fost tu, dragă trăguță, Mi-ai cerut ciora cu panglicuță, Și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea la tale, Să-ți cumpere neica și sandale. Good evening, good evening, Rabbi Asa. David. I'm David Viviano and uh, I'm in beautiful Southern California on a wonderful evening of May 21st, Tuesday, 2013, with the with my friend and the great, great human being, Rabbi Haim Asa from Burgas, Bulgaria, now in Fullerton, California. And I'm pleased to introduce him and to speak to us about a very interesting subject. Very sad, but very interesting. Thank you, David. Let me say a word about the monarchy in Bulgaria. When Bulgaria became independent, let's say 150 years ago, from Turkish yoke, they literally went around shopping for a king because at that time they thought that monarchy was the best rule or the best form of government for a country like Bulgaria. Which has been for 500 years, I think, under uh, the... Uh, Turkish yoke. Uh, Ottoman, yeah. Ot Ot Ottoman, uh, Ottoman Ro Empire. Ottoman Empire. Yeah. Like 450 o years or so. Ottoman Empire right. ruled Bulgaria for 500 years. And they came across uh, Ferdinand. King Ferdinand. King Ferdinand, who was not a great light or is not a great uh, uh, name, but Bulgaria didn't deserve any big names or like uh, the British or the, uh, the, the whatever it is, uh, monarchy. So they chose King Ferdinand. Wasn't this the king was that was assassinated in uh, Serbia? No. In Sarajevo? No, that's no. a different King Ferdinand. That's a different king. In 1914. Uh, uh, 1914, right. right. So it's a different King Ferdinand. Yeah, and <coughs> King Ferdinand came and he ruled for, uh, what, uh, 30 years? W what uh, period is that, beginning uh, of the Let's say uh, uh, the last part of the 19th century right. and the first part of the 20th century. And then <coughs> King Boris was pronounced as the successor, and he was a young man at the time. Was he a direct relative of Ferdinand? Yes, he was the son of Ferdinand, and uh, much brighter, much uh, much cleverer uh, than his father, and his nickname was Boris the Fox, F-O-X. The Fox. That's because clever. the Fox is an animal that knows how to navigate and to hide and to disappear and come back and etc etc. So King Boris was uh, was very very uh, clever. clever and very much loved by the by the population. Now <coughs> he had two hobbies. He was a great botanist or horticulturist. He loved flowers. He loved flowers. He loved nature. He he put together an incredible botanical garden. Which to uh, this day survives in Sofia. Exactly. In the middle of the city, there's a great botanical garden. Yeah, exactly. Garden. And his second love, or really first love, was railroads, locomotives, railroad cars, <coughs> trains. And he was <coughs> in paradise, literally, when he could drive the uh, locomotive, the engine that carries all the trains from A to B, and this was his hobby. Perhaps uh, as a child, uh, yes. his father introduced him to the famous Lionel uh, toy trains that sparked an interest. Like Probably. Yes. As a matter of fact, <coughs> in a, in a fiction, non-fiction book written about me, and the name uh, of the book is? Uh, the belly of uh, under the octopus. And it's in uh, English? It's in English. Under yes. the octopus. Yeah. And the octopus meaning to say that here was the octopus and somehow we survived under the 
Nazis. The Nazis. Uh, for the next session, session I'll bring the book so I could show the title and all that. And uh, they're trying to make a movie out of it. And we'll see if it comes to fruition. Hopefully, hopefully it will come to fruition. So to continue yeah. with the, the story about King so, Gabor so and what happened uh, regarding yeah. the, his assassination. It, yeah, but just yeah. in the book, I am bringing back to Madrid because the king Spain. was. Uh, yeah, his son, Simeon, was exiled. Well, they were all exiled. King Boris's son is King yeah. Simeon. Simeon, right. And I bring back the locomotive, the toy locomotive that his father had as a child. So it is a true story about yeah. the Lionel trains. Now, King Boris was invited by Hitler to come to the uh, Hitler's uh, headquarters and we're told by witnesses that they've never, never seen Hitler speak in such not only strong voice but almost like commanding another head of state, another monarch. equal, yeah. another monarch or whatever, dictator or or democratically, or monarchical, doesn't matter, but at least, and this was August 19th, August 16th, 1943. Why do you remember this date so clearly? Uh, I remember it because this was the, Hitler sent his own private plane to Sofia, King Boris and a couple of his uh, uh, ministers got into the plane, flew to uh, Germany, met with Hitler, the meeting was only 24 hours, and they returned to Sofia also in Hitler's private plane. Now, King Boris was young. He was probably, uh, let's say, uh, 40, in excellent shape. Physically, he was a mountain climber, he was a hunter, he was a person that could well withstand any kind of physical uh, uh, or, or uh, trauma. trauma. And in the middle of the flight, the king did not feel well. By the time they got to Sofia Airport, he was hospitalized. and. They said it was just a, you know, flu or virus or whatever it is, three days or four days. It got a little better, and of course, you always get better before you die. And uh, ten days later, the king was dead. Despite of the fact that Hitler's personal physicians were dispatched to Sofia to take care of him and to get him healed or cured. Well, my guess is, and the royal family, by the way, never pursued uh, that, that matter. Uh, my guess is that Hitler had poisoned him while he was in Germany, in Berlin, and got rid of him, thinking that his son, uh, Simeon, who was born in 1937, so in 43, was six years old, will be pronounced as the next uh, uh, king. And of course, he had three regents, three people that advised him that were responsible for the day-to-day uh, day -day affairs of running the country. So the king was buried with great sadness, with great uh, 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 love, and that's how the last king of Bulgaria for all purposes because a year later the communists came in and of course Simeon was no longer a prince to be successor to the king. Uh, the family was exiled to Egypt. Uh, well, Egypt offered him hospitality and the wife of, of King Boris, which was uh, <coughs> Princessa Giovanna of Italy. She was the daughter 
of King Emmanuel III of Italy. Of Italy. So she came from a royal family, very respected royal family, and uh, the widow and her two children, Maria Luisa, who was born in 1934, and uh, Prince Simeon, who was born in 1937, uh, lived in total seclusion once the communists came in, and after about two years, in 1946, they were allowed to leave the country, literally with a couple of suitcases, and that's all. It's an extraordinary story. Yeah. It's so this story. is sad chapter in the in the in the history of Bulgaria, where King highly beloved, highly respected, and very efficient, who was able to save us, the Jews, from the Nazi Holocaust, from the Shoah, as we say in Hebrew, the destruction of the European Jewry, and King Boris was the person that saved, in my opinion, together with the church, Bulgarian church, and together with members of parliament headed by uh, Dmitry Peshev, he was able to save us from being shipped to Treblinka, which would, would have been our destiny in March of 1943. So the same year that he saved us, his life was taken by... Well, it sounds to me, uh, Rabbi Asa, that uh, King Boris knew the risk he was taking by not <coughs> listening and obeying the this madman Hitler and obviously he paid the ultimate price and he became a martyr for his own people because he did consider all the Jews in Bulgaria as Bulgarians and nothing else they were all Bulgarians to him and human beings uh, exactly as, as so he did exactly. pay the ultimate price and he deserves a place in history along yeah. with his wife and all the other clergy and all the other Gentiles that helped in the process of not allowing such a terrible thing I've did been, happen to the Bulgarian I've been Jews. Working and fighting for that recognition for now uh, 50 years. Well, perhaps uh, with all the stories that we're gathering from you, which is an extraordinary event, and I'm very fortunate to have met you and to listen to these stories and to hopefully give the world a window into a very dark past, but where there were a lot of lights shining in that darkness and. Several of them, you mentioned the king, his wife, the clergy, and many more people are going to be mentioned in our future conversations. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank, thank and you. I'm looking forward to the next segment. What do you think you might uh, speak in the next segment <coughs> or in the next story? Well, I will describe the resettlement of the Jews of Bulgaria from the big cities into the small villages which is contrary to any logic, because if you want to exterminate people, right. you concentrate them. To control them, to, to, right, to watch. Rather than disperse them. That's right. uh, take uh, Warsaw Ghetto, for example. Right. Uh, 500,000 Jews In arrived one to one place where the Nazis could now Monitor ship them and, and kill them yeah. uh, systematically. In Bulgaria, the opposite happened. Well, obviously, King Boris was uh, a brilliant uh, tactician and he also had a big heart, perhaps because uh, he, he was a human being, first of all, and he understood that no harm should ha come to any living human beings. Citizen of Bulgaria. And citizen of Bulgaria, which yeah. is part of the other stories of how he could not help the Bulgarians, the Jewish Bulgarians that live in the annexed territories of Thrakia and Macedonia, which was part of the, yeah. the sadness that he could not say because they did not have Bulgarian citizenship. Exactly. So we will continue. This Thank you with very the next much, story. David. Thank you, and I'm looking forward to the next segment. Thank you. Good Thank evening, you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> 
Ușor cu nu sparale, Să-ți cumpă sandale, Buzunarele sunt goale bal. Mai apoi trecuță, Încă o băncuță, Și băui în colitru.